first question, who are you? Uh, basically, to introduce myself to you. I'm Mona Abu-Suleyman. I have a very popular TV show, and also I work with the United Nations as part of the regional strategic uh, group um, for the World Humanitarian Summit. Um, I'm a mother of two as well, um, and I have a lot of interest, uh, mainly in how can we translate academic um, journals into Arabic, um, I also work on entrepreneurship with Dillani al or Show Me the Money, um, uh, a way of helping entrepreneurs get access to malls and to uh, uh, points of sales that are uh, that enable them to uh, showcase their products very quickly, very easily to the right market. Um, what drove you to become involved in humanitarian work? I. I I've always been involved in humanitarian work. I think perhaps my father, who has been working in the field uh, in different ways, looking at the intellectual and educational aspects of it for about 60 years now, uh, working with him, um, started it. Uh, and of course then, I, uh, my own personal interest in helping people reach their potential as a teacher and as a media personality uh, enabled me to go into areas perhaps that most people wouldn't go into. Um, so about 15 years ago, I started working with um, uh, the disabled, uh, people who um, had uh, less than others, and looking at how can we actually give them dignity. I think dignity for me is a very important message, um, because also as well I work with women, um, and uh, that's another group that lacks a lot of um, um, help and uh, sometimes is not treated with dignity. Why are you attending the World Humanitarian Summit? It's the place to be today. Uh, the World Humanitarian Summit, WHS, is where all the stakeholders are at. Government, um, uh, NGOs, uh, people who are displaced, um, decision makers, donors. So this is the place to be. And I was part of um, the regional group that helped bring the consultations of over 3,000 uh, people, um, NGOs, and um, various groups from the Middle East and what they need um, from the World Humanitarian Summit to the summit, so I'm part of that. What is my hope for the summit? I have a lot of hopes for the summit. I think when you um, get everybody um, on board uh, to look at the refugee um, problem, no, no longer as a refugee problem that is a world problem, looking at it as uh, people who um, truly need our help, they're not poor, they're not uh, criminal, they're not terrorists. They are people that have been driven away from their homes under extreme circumstances. And how can we all come together as a world, a uh, world of humanity, uh, to give them the help that they need and enable them to go back into their own countries, um, again, with dignity. What are my initial thoughts about the summit so far? So the plenary was beautiful. We had a lot of... Um, refugees who went through um, natural disasters and uh, wars come and speak very emotionally about what happened. We had world leaders uh, come and pledge. I, I liked Angela, uh, Angela Merkel's um, commitment. I liked the way that she presented her position and uh, the strength of her commitment as well as uh, the United Nations coming in and saying we are just a convening power but there are uh, certain principles of humanitarian belief, of dignity, of ending this idea of helping people but, um, and changing it into ending need, um, creating systems that would not, would enable us to stop uh, the refugee uh, problem from happening again and again. What are you most interested in learning at the WHS? So um, I'm a geek. I think the innovation market is a place that I'm really interested in being at. I'm looking at um, seeing what are the innovations um, from logistics to um, uh, apps to actual products that can help save people's lives. There was this um, blanket um, that helps um, uh, newborns uh, when they're born uh, under, you know, uh, in the desert or in transition with no medical help. Uh, to keep their body uh, temperature. Uh, and so it actually helps to get the child 
a good, to give the child a good uh, chance to live until they reach a medical facility. Uh, there are ways of looking at how can you know if there are explosives in the ground um, and monitoring them. So this uh, DHL has a way of uh, figuring out uh, if there's a natural disaster, how they can use their own expertise uh, to go into those airports and those uh, points of entry and help uh, the logistics of the other NGOs. So a lot of different ways of how we can help uh, at a moment of disaster uh, things that are very new, things that I haven't heard of, and I'm very excited about it. What inspires me to get up in the morning? I think my kids, um, my girls. Um, I, I get a lot of energy from my daughters, um, thinking about their future, thinking about what are the things that we can uh, do together. Um, I was just in Jordan with my daughter for her own initiative, Amalbox, hashtag Amalbox, and um, where we uh, gave school supplies to um, refugee children. And it was her first time. She's been working on this for two years, collecting the supplies and um, you know, uh, collecting donations. But this was her first time out of six or seven different donation drives that she's done that she was actually in the school um, giving herself um, and seeing the children uh, who um, got those presents. And that was uh, a beautiful moment for me because helping her um, achieve her own potential, helping her figure out what she wants to do in life, helping her become part of humanity, become part of um, the world, and um, helping others is my primary role as a mom. It also happens to be that I'm uh, working in this field, and so it's a double pleasure to see, um, to see her doing these things. Why is the UN so important for solving humanitarian issues? Well, there aren't many bodies that are not politically um, attached. So countries have agendas. Uh, the UN, uh, for better or for worse, is one of the few bodies in the world that has a little bit less agenda than others. There are issues with the UN, of course. I think the Security Council, the veto, um, the way that things um, get done are very bureaucratic. And so we would hope that the UN improves. We would hope that the UN uh, figures out how to become more effective. Uh, but until now, we don't have another body that can actually act as um, a wiser, non-politically driven uh, um, entity that can help solve issues. What more can people do to get involved in, cause, in causes they care about? So this is really important because a lot of people want to do something. And I think um, the first thing that you do is figure out if there's any place in your local area that uh, uh, does what you want to do. So for example, if you're interested in education, whether it's for locals or for the refugees, um, look around and figure out what is going on, uh, survey the terrain. If there isn't, then um, do some research, figure out which kind of uh, organizations you're really interested in, and actually write to them. Tell them, I'm interested in you know X, Y, and Z. And they can actually help you either uh, with finding an organization near you that you can work with, or uh, hook you up and uh, allow you to help them. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can help. You can help by giving your expertise. You can help by being an advocate, you can help by um, actually uh, volunteering um, either in your area or abroad. There's so many things that can be done and so many things that are needed and everybody's effort is really welcomed. How do you think organizations like Facebook can help with humanitarian crisis? So Facebook has several things. First of all, for example, um, they uh, developed something a while back where if there's a humanitarian crisis or a, a big crisis, um, you can tag yourself so people know that you're okay. I think that is, um, uh, was awesome. Uh, this is something that uh, allows people to um, uh, you know, uh, not waste energy at a moment of crisis thinking, is somebody safe or not? Uh, they're also working with the virtual reality and creating different um, videos to allow people to experience what it means to be in a crisis, whether it's refugees or humanitarian or natural. Um, I think they have also uh, the ability to connect people. So perhaps when uh, there is a, a big cause like um, uh, trying to find um, 
shelter or provide food uh, on a large scale, Facebook can actually convene. It's a convening place where people can actually donate. Um, so there's a lot of uses for Facebook in a humanitarian crisis. What are the most important lessons we should be learning from the WHS? Excuse me. For me, the most important lesson is that we need to look at this humanitarian crisis, uh, people who are um, suffering, and see them as human beings. We sometimes forget because of the mass numbers, because there's so many, so many people um, that need help, that they just become a number, and we lose um, this personalization. We forget that it's somebody just like you, uh, just like me who might have lost their home, or who were bombed, or who have been sleeping under the threat of being bombed, um, who don't have security, who are walking around um, in, in out of his clothing, uh, not knowing whether they're going to live for the next day or not. Um, in the WHS, this idea of giving people dignity, this idea of creating safe uh, corridors, uh, the idea of humanitarian relief becoming above the political fry, the idea of ending need, ending this idea, the, the, the issue where um, human beings become collateral damage. I think these are the important things for me in the WHS. Can you tell us about a time you've been particularly impressed by aid work you've seen in action? There's so many examples of great aid work, people who have selflessly given their expertise. Um, I think there was a Danish doctor who um, kept going to Gaza even when it was bombed um, to help with the medical um, emergencies in the hospital. Um, and you admire somebody who has no connection to, to the area, um, who has given so much uh, of his time and his expertise uh, because he saw how complicated and how difficult and how inhumane um, the Gazans were being treated. I think today we had we heard about a Syrian uh, mines expert who um, lives in Syria and who uh, tries to find explosives and uh, you know defuse them, and he lost two of his fingers and a leg in, in a failed attempt. And he got uh, artificial limbs, and he's still working because he doesn't want children to find those minds um, and, and the selfless, selflessness of his work. There are so many people who have bled for their own um, organizations for, to help others, who have uh, gone beyond the call of duty, who have gone beyond uh, even humane limits. Um, you, you have to admire them. They're, they're probably the heroes of our time. What is the one thing you want people watching to know about the work you're doing? I'm doing so many things. I think I want everybody to um, watch my show, Sunday 9.30 on NBC. Uh, but I also would love for them to actually contribute, uh, to give voice uh, to um, a cause that they believe in, to think about what they really believe in, and to help. Um, I mean, everybody can do something to help. Everybody can contribute. Everybody can uh, work towards ending uh, the crises that we are uh, at right now, but also work on preventing these crises from happening again. We keep saying, never again. We keep saying, never again, and yet it happens all the time. By holding people accountable, by holding governments accountable, by holding the UN accountable, by making sure that the money that you donate uh, works to give maximum impact, you can do something to end the situation that we're in. Can you tell us about one person you've met whose story really stuck with you? I meet so many people um, whose lives have been upended by crises. Um, I think so many stories um, resonate. I'm a, a, an Arab, I'm a Muslim, I'm somebody who lives in the region, and so I'm one degree removed from many families that have suffered, whether in Egypt, whether in, in Yemen, whether in Syria, whether in Iraq, um, you know, friends of uh, family members or family members who are uh, friends. Um, and so my life kind of feels almost like a never-ending crisis. But one story that stuck with me was a boy who was a little bit autistic, and he um, 
uh, ran uh, not ran away, but I mean he uh, left his home in Syria and ended up in Jordan. And uh, he didn't speak very well because of his disability. Uh, but uh, a Syrian volunteer uh, at the IMC um, Art Therapy Center in uh, Zarqa um, actually figured out that the, the boy would uh, be able to use uh, computers and coding very well. And so they um, employed him to help them with their um, tech um, issues. And um, I actually have a video of him on my Snapchat, um, my Instagram. Uh, of how much he's uh, improved. And this is a, ma a boy who lost his parents. And you can see that despite all the losses that he's had, um, somebody offering help, the right kind of help, changed his life. Um, and it's so touching to see that kind of collaboration and cooperation and uh, selfish giving uh, from so many people that made this boy's life different. If there's one thing that could be fixed in this world, what should it be? A politics, definitely. I mean, the three quarters of the problems we have is because of politics, is because of countries and um, organizations and companies uh, within those countries uh, thinking selfishly about themselves or their profits or the political agenda and forgetting about um, the people. Um, I think. Um, if there's one thing that we can do is looking at how can we actually share in the wealth, how can we uh, become truly humanitarian. Um, I think this is a very important change. We're seeing it with millennials who are becoming global citizens. And um, the world will change once the politics gets fixed. What would success look like for you at WHS? So success is the politicians coming together, I think, for me, first and foremost, and this is something very doable, creating safety corridors where humanitarian help can get in, medical help can get in, um, where our humanitarian aid relief workers are not under threat, whether they are from the country or from um, outside organizations and foreigners, where journalists, medical um, aid workers, can actually deliver the work that they have to do um, without fear. Uh, this is something that I really think is doable, and we can do it. Uh, it takes a little bit of, uh, you know, maneuvering and political manipulations and whatever else has to happen behind closed doors. But this is something very doable. The, the second thing I would love to have is the outcome that is kind of like the dream, where we look at how can we create ways of solving politics without killing people, uh, about sharing power. Um, about forgetting about sectarian uh, divides, about um, creating borders that actually are more about uh, humans versus resources. So this is the end, and um, it was a very enjoyable um, uh, question and answer um, session. I hope that I answered the, the questions that came up, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in another live section. session.